This is Nagaland. One of India's most insecure and poorest states. It is in the country's mountainous northeast corner. Remarkably, even remote villages here are affected by the rising global prices of milk, meat and cereals. Most Naga ethnic groups have always kept pigs. Pork remains their preferred meat. Today's skyrocketing grain prices mean the small black pigs these tribal people skip, which are adapted to local feed resources, have suddenly become more attractive than big white imported pigs, which have to be fed on expensive grain. Pig farmers here and in the poor neighboring state of Assam now have a window of opportunity to step up their pig production and sell their native animals across the two states. But as markets for pigs are getting larger, so is the market chain, making the business of supplying disease-free, safe meat increasingly hard for small producers. On top of that, there are no functioning breeding schemes or feed systems that would allow poor livestock keepers to turn their farms into money-making businesses. This lack of quality knowledge is stopping expansion in a rapidly changing industry that could benefit many of the most vulnerable members of society, such as women and children. Without this kind of knowledge and training, which researchers and their local partners could offer, an opportunity for millions of the world's poor to climb out of poverty through enhanced pig farming and marketing will be lost. Development agencies have tried for decades to raise the very low household incomes in Assam and Nagaland. But even though pig keeping is central to the livelihoods of the poor, and especially poor women, pig production has seldom been viewed as a development tool for the region. This is peculiar because until recently local demand for pork was so great that it was profitable for local businessmen to import large numbers of commercial white pigs from producers in India's grain states farther west. Animals were being transported two to three thousand kilometers at a cost of forty dollars each. But grain-based feeds and transport have both recently shot up in price, adding even more to the cost. People in Assam and Nagaland are suddenly finding the imported white pigs far too expensive. These pigs grow bigger and faster and have more piglets, but need to be fed on high-priced grain. A new market is growing fast for the local black and crossbred animals. Because these native pigs can be fed mostly on low-cost feed crops and crop wastes, they are an ideal solution to fill the new pork and piglet supply gap. However, markets are changing so fast that smallholder farmers can no longer make it alone. They lack access to information and resources. 
and linkages to health and breeding services, business support and feeding systems. But all these are vital if they are to expand while also meeting increasingly demanding new health and safety standards. This short-term opportunity is ready-made for success. The pigs are here, the demand is here, and farmers ambitious to grow their pig enterprises are here. With new knowledge and training about food safety and how to reach the more distant markets, which researchers and their national partners are ready to provide, most tribal households in these states could boost their herd sizes and double their incomes sustainably and in a cost-effective way over the next five to ten years. Throughout the northeastern region, the very popular livestock we have is the piggery. Very poor people, they are rearing indigenous pigs. Piggery could be one of the most viable alternatives which can sustain the agricultural production in this region. Without support, millions of people will increasingly suffer poverty, conflicts, and the loss of dignity that goes with forced migration to cities. However, with help, they can maintain the traditional livelihoods that sustain communities and generate prosperity.